what's good YouTube it's your boy Logan aka Logie Beats back at it again with another video in this one I'm gonna be kind of breaking down how I make um, like melodies and bass lines for West Coast kind of beats that a lot of people ask me about it on like Instagram and commenting on the other tutorials that I've done so I'm gonna do this one real quick if it, this video helps you out drop a like drop a comment drop a subscribe that helps me out helps me make more videos and stuff for you guys all right cool so let's get into it the first thing i kind of want to talk about when you're trying to learn any genre of music whether it's like hip-hop or anything really um is that genres of music are going to kind of have like certain characteristics that they use it's not like a solid rule like you have to do this thing for it to be this you know certain type of music but most songs in any particular genre are going to at least use like, you know, one or two of these elements. The main things I kind of listen for if I'm trying to learn a new genre is the tempo, the sound selection, and the rhythms. And like I said, it, it's, it's a little hard to explain. Um, these aren't rules. They're more kind of like guidelines. I've already got some sounds pulled up here. I'm just going to try and kind of like go over some of the like chord progressions and rhythms and stuff like that, like that I would use when I'm making a melody and a bass line for this type of beat. A quick disclaimer before I start, I'm not like an expert on uh, music theory or, you know, like uh, chords and that kind of stuff. I am just going to try and explain it the way that I understand and the way that like works for me. So, uh, you know, don't, don't take me like I'm, uh, trying to, to promote myself as I'm like an expert or something like that, because I'm not, I'm just showing you the, the way that I like to do this stuff. Like I said, I've got a few different sounds pulled up here. I'm in, uh, C minor here. Uh, I got like a keyboard, some bass sounds, and then some some melody, like lead kind of sounds. Just bumped into my mic, sorry if that made a loud noise. Okay, so the first sound that I have pulled up is a e-piano from Massive. It's this one <coughs> in the electric piano section. It's called, uh, what is it, Rosewood. And I use this one all the time, like really, really often. Almost every every beat that I make, I use at least start with this piano. So this is what it sounds like. Sounds a little ugly by itself, but when it's all in everything, it kind of, it, it'll make uh, more sense. Okay, so like I was saying earlier, um, I, I just realized you can't see my tempo, but the tempo is at 98. Uh, tempo is kind of a really important part of this type of music. The tempos I normally use, are going to be from like 90 to like 110 but even more often probably like 95 to like 105 uh, for west coast kind of music so that's kind of where you definitely want to start i've got my tempo at 98 like i said i always like to start off with the chords personally i know some people start with like the bass lines or the melodies or whatever um, i'll usually just start with the chord right here on like the first uh, note of the scale and so like I was saying earlier as well, rhythm is like a big characteristic, especially in West Coast music. So, <clears throat> excuse me, um, at 98 BPM, your clap is going to be on the, the first beat here. Uh, you could do this kind of music, you know, in like double time too. So you'd be like 200 BPM, but I like to do it slower. So a really common rhythm that I like to use, and if you listen to like West Coast music, you would recognize. And it's basically this this bounce right here. Okay, so it's where the chord changes or any note kind of changes like after the first clap in the sequence. Um, just listen to like this type of music and you'll hear this like this exact chord progression all the time. Um, I normally try and keep the chord progressions like fairly simple. I usually use probably two or maybe three chords in any chord progression. Like when I'm doing this type of music, you don't really want to have like 
the chord like the chords don't really drive the the song they're kind of just in the background i would say kind of giving it like more <clears throat> more rhythm and sort of like filling the beat out and stuff cool so this is kind of a, a good start there are a lot of rhythms that I'll use when I'm making a chord progression like this, but most commonly the chords are going to hit on um, either like the first, like the downbeat, which is going to be here, 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 you know, so on, or they're going to hit on like the offbeat, like this, this one is here. So they're going to hit like in between the beats. I don't know if I'm explaining that in the right way, but hopefully you kind of Get what I'm what I'm saying about it. Like another common common one that I would use would be to put the chord like right here. So this should sound good too. Cool. But I like how we had it, so I'm just gonna kind of leave it there. Cool. And then I want to add one more chord in at the end too. Cool, that sounds pretty cool. So I'm gonna add like a few different notes to these chords and maybe invert some of them just to like make it sound a little more interesting. Oops. I like that. I'm actually going to move this chord back though, uh, over here. Cool. And sometimes I like to throw in some extra notes kind of at the end of, of like the, um, the pattern. So that's sounding good. Um, the next thing I like to move on to is the uh, bass line after this. So I actually got two bass presets pulled up. One is a sub bass in Citrus that I use really often. It's called Subway or Sub Bass 2, not Subway. Sub Bass 2 in Citrus. It's just like a stock preset. I've showed it in other videos too. I use this one uh, really often. I usually just layer like another sound with it. And then I have an expand preset that I made. Kind of high. Cool. So, um, hopefully, if you don't have headphones, you can still hear the bass at least a little bit. But yeah, what I'm going to basically do is kind of like layer both of these bass sounds together and it should sound pretty decent. Cool. So, I'll usually just start with the sub bass and I'll kind of follow like the bottom notes of the chord progressions. Real quick, I know I just said I'm going to follow the bottom notes of the chord progression. Like I said, I'm not an expert on music theory, but I know the way that this chord here is uh, set up, that C is, t is technically still the bottom note of it. So that's why I'm starting on C. I'm just imagining kind of the chords that I actually started with, you know, which were right here. Oops, actually, we're right here. Um, and kind of ignoring the ones that I added in after, because those are just sort of like accent notes for the original chord that I had, if that makes sense. I'm going to try and basically come up with a rhythm. When you're making the basses for this kind of stuff, you you want to view it almost like it's still a bass line, but it's almost like another instrument too. So it's kind of okay to add in like a few extra notes. But I'll usually start almost like I'm putting in like an 808 or like a kick and just kind of find like the rhythm that I like and then fill in some extra notes like around it afterwards.
cool. So I'm happy with like that rhythm and stuff. It's sounding pretty good. Uh, I want to try and add in kind of a few like faster notes though. And so I'm going to change my little time, time stretch thingy here. And I'm going to add in like some faster notes in this area, I think. Probably here. And then what I want to do next is layer this sound with this next one. And so this is where it sort of starts like sounding a little cooler. Oops. Raise that cut off on that one a little bit. And then what I usually like to do when I layer these is um, delete some of the notes on like the second one. <clears throat> Just gives it more of a rhythm. So what I'm going to do is delete these faster notes and then maybe this one too. sounding pretty uh pretty good it's got like a good rhythm kind of going with it uh like i said before <laughs> i personally like to start with like the chords and the bass just because it kind of makes it easier for me to add in like the leads and stuff but uh there's no like right or wrong way to do this so i mean some people start with the drums some people start with the bass some start with the melody like it doesn't really matter um this is just kind of how i like to do it and so I got a lead pulled up here. Actually, this is a piano. I'm going to probably add that in last, but I got a uh, simple sign. I got a sign lead pulled up here. I like to use the simple sign in uh, purity here. And I just turn on the glide, turn this up a little bit, and then I like to um, raise the attack to just a little bit so it doesn't make that like clicking noise when you press the note. Um, should be able to hear on here. It sounds pretty smooth. Oops. Oops, this is actually the wrong preset. Uh, no, oops. That was the right one. Sorry, I put the slide too high. But yeah, I like to turn up the slide a little bit and then take off the attack. And so what the glide knob does is uh, make the note so it slides in between, which is uh, pretty crucial for this, this type of stuff. Cool. So when I'm doing the melodies, like it's um, kind of just what whatever sounds good. I have a keyboard in front of me, so a lot of times I'll kind of just um, just play on that. I'm not very good on the keyboard, but I'll kind of like play on that until I make something that sounds cool or I'll just try like some random stuff. Um, I like to start usually with the melodies sort of on the, um, the top note of the chords. Like I said earlier, kind of we start on the bottom notes with the bass line. I sort of do a similar thing with the, uh, with the melodies. And so I'm going to just kind of try a few different things here and see if anything, you know, sounds, sounds all right.
like that. I like how that sounds actually a lot. Um, cool. Let me save this real quick. Hold on. All right. Cool. So I'm liking how that sounds. Sorry, I didn't kind of like talk and explain how I was doing it. Um, with the melodies and this type of beat, especially when you're doing the leads, um, I would say it's just kind of about being creative. Like I said, I kind of started and sort of followed like the top notes of the chord, but with the melody, like you really don't like have to do that. That's kind of just a, an easy way to start. I mean, I guess the best tip I could give you is like get a sound that sounds good and then just try and make something that sounds catchy. Like that's really all that it is. Um, and usually simple too. Like the melodies, you, you've already got like a chord progression going. So you don't got like you don't need to add like a bunch of notes or like, you know, notice how there's not any like chords or any like weird, crazy stuff in this. Like, you know, sometimes keeping it simple is, is kind of better than trying to do something super crazy. But uh, yeah, I'd like to add in a piano or a kind of like a pluck or some other sort of sound um, just to kind of like keep things interesting um, in the beat once you get into like laying it out and stuff like that. Like having another melody sound just kind of helps in the verses and stuff like that. So I got the, the classic arena ambience nexus preset um this is like the legendary piano preset in nexus it's the very first one when you go to the pianos and then uh, i just turned down like the reverb and the delay on it and stuff so when it comes to i guess making like you know some people call it like a counter melody or whatever you want to call it it's sort of the same thing I, you want to make it sort of work together with you know like the other melody that you have going on you don't want it to just sort of like overpower it or like you know take over so one good tip that i have um it's a little it's a little bit hard to explain sorry guys I, i'm really like not the best at explaining this stuff um but when you're making a counter melody look at your original melody And I like to um, add notes almost like a almost like a chord progression, I guess you could say. In that, I will um, use a note that's going to sound good with the other melody, if that makes sense. So this is I copied the original um, sign melody to my piano, right? I need the bass as well. So that sounds actually pretty cool with the piano, but uh, that's what that sign is playing. It's the exact same notes. And I could do this. I could just layer this with it, but I'd like to like it to sound like a little more um, interesting. <clears throat> Whoops. Like I said before, um, I like to treat it almost the same as like a chord progression. So this is your first note. I'm going to you know, skip one and use this note here instead.
so I think I'm happy with that right there. Um, this melody, I'm going to actually probably bring the piano up like an octave. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I kind of like that. It, it it layers over the sine wave pretty well. I think I'm actually going to change this to like a bell sound now. Like a little bit different sound. Yeah, I think that sounds better. Um, yeah, so that's kind of like the bass line melody that I would use. Um, you could always add in a few little more extra notes or kind of change ups or another thing I would maybe add to this is like a vocal or something like that from like arcade or uh, exhale, um, you know, something like that. And then I would definitely mix this down a little bit more too. The lead is sounding like kind of harsh and the, the bass and stuff like that. They could be layered a little bit better. But it's a it's a good start for a beat. Um, from here, I mean, I would essentially just you know take it out and kind of uh, lay it out the way that I would want to you know want to hear it like in the beat, and then I would probably build the drums around that. Um, I'm not gonna get really into the drums today. I don't want this tutorial to be like over an hour long. Um, but yeah, this is probably kind of the way that I would personally lay it out. guys so i think this pretty much wraps up the video uh like i said in the beginning i'm really not the best at explaining this stuff and you know i'm not like an expert on music theory and you know all that kind of stuff uh, but you know i hope this tutorial did help some people out that want to like learn about this music if it did drop a like drop a comment drop a sub um you know let me know what you liked about the video and if you've got any questions about this type of stuff drop a comment and i'm gonna try and answer all of them also drop a comment let me know what kind of video you want to see next and i'm gonna try and get it done if there's a lot of people that want to see it so thank you for watching and peace